Uh, well, I think the, 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 the work that, that you, Adam, have done over the years and many uh, journalists and Parliament and everything else ensures that ministers are subject to a very high degree of scrutiny and I certainly feel subject to a very high degree of scrutiny. I don't think that we, we need to introduce further institutions in addition to that. Uh, I mean, the well, just like in other countries, some of your viewers may have experienced this uh, or your listeners in countries like the United States, Canada, Japan and elsewhere, is another tool in the toolkit in an emergency situation. So we'd only issue this alert if people's life was in danger. So I think, for example, of, say, a river that's going to burst its banks uh, and your life's going to be in danger because your home's going to be inundated unless you get out. We would target it at those areas. In terms of what we're doing today, it's a bit like the fire alarm drill at work. It might be slightly irritating, but we are testing the system. So everyone will receive the alert at 3 p.m. this afternoon. The key thing is there's no need to do anything. It's just a test. And will you be pressing the button to trigger it? Uh, I will authorise it, but uh, <laughs> in a sort of a metaphorical sense, as it were, there's a, there's a, I won't go into the details of it, but there's a, there's a computer system with very high levels of uh, accreditation to actually make the thing happen, which we've developed uh, through the National Cyber Security Centre, which is part of GCHQ. There's something else coming up in the next couple of weeks, of course. It's the coronation, and there are some really worrying reports on the front page of the Mail on Sunday today about rape alarms, which could be thrown at horses by campaigners' activists to spook them. How are you going to prevent that from happening? Well, we take this uh, very seriously. Uh, I have been meeting uh, with the Home Secretary, uh, with the, the Culture Secretary, who has responsibility for the ceremonials uh, for the coronation. Uh, we've been uh, briefed by the, the police and received intelligence reports in respect of this. What I would say is that uh, we have experience of dealing with these situations. Uh, it's a relatively similar situation to what happened with the, the Platinum Jubilee and indeed with uh, Queen Elizabeth's uh, funeral, so we will be taking all necessary steps to protect the integrity of the occasion. But we do know that this could be a much more coordinated and a bigger uh, protest, if you like. I mean, will you be using banning orders? Will you search people before they enter that, that area on the day? Because you know who a lot of these people are going to be. They're, they're prominent campaigners in groups like Just Stop Oil. Well, clearly the, the police are operationally independent in this country, uh, but we are working uh, very closely indeed. I, I have met with uh, relevant commanders in respect of the operation. I know that they are taking this uh, very seriously and that they will use the full range of powers at their disposal to make sure that public order is maintained and that the, the ceremony is not disrupted. There's another area of concern uh, this weekend and, of course, this week, which is the situation in Sudan. When and how will the government start to evacuate people? Because people have been suggesting that the UK government has left them abandoned in that situation. Well, clearly our priority is to protect British nationals. This is a complex and rapidly moving uh, situation. What I can say is that the Ministry of Defence is uh, working uh, very closely in support of the Foreign Office. Uh, you wouldn't expect me to comment on the operational situation on the ground for security but reasons, but I can assure evacuated? you that the Prime Minister has been the, the, the Prime Minister has been spearheading our response to this and chairing Cobras throughout the weekend. So. Uh, on your point about whether people will be uh, evacuated, what I would say is that this isn't uh, quite in a similar situation to what we saw in uh, op pitting in Afghanistan. We don't have the same level of assets in the country, but we, I, I can assure you that uh, currently, as, as, as we speak, the Ministry of Defence are okay. working very closely uh, with the Foreign Office, but I'm afraid I can't comment further on the situation on the ground for security reasons. OK, I want to move on to one of the biggest stories that's happened this week. It is, of course, Dominic Raab's resignation. You have got a new job. That's why you're here with us today. Is there a bullying problem in this government? No, I don't uh, believe that is the case. Well, there are three other cabinet ministers, we're told, on watch because of their behaviour. Are you one of them? Have you ever been warned formally or informally about your own behaviour? Well, I think that anyone who has uh, worked with me would, would not think that that characterisation uh, applied to me. Clearly, we take uh, any allegations uh, very seriously. And actually, if you look in, in respect of Tolly's report, it was a very comprehensive uh, examination into the facts of, of the case. Uh, what I would say is that 
John Robb is a, a man of his word and he said that he would resign if there were adverse findings against him uh, and that's exactly what he did. So you're not one of the ministers who've been warned. You've never had a warning about your behaviour, informal or formal? Uh, as, as I said to you, that's not the case. I'm somebody, I think those people that know me well and have uh, worked with me uh, would not accept that, uh, that characterisation of me. Is the civil service stopping ministers from getting things done? Because you've said this morning that you've experienced frustrations with the civil service. What, what frustrations were those? Well, I think that anybody that works at the top of government, uh, whether that's as a civil servant or indeed as a minister, uh, will know that it is a very demanding situation. We are working to serve the uh, British people. And I actually have found in my experience that we've been able to work very collaboratively together. I think, for example, of the £2 billion cultural recovery fund that we pulled together in a matter of days, working incredibly collaboratively with DCMS, with Number 10, uh, with uh, other parts of government that basically saved uh, live theatre in this country. Mm. We can work together very well. And what I don't want, though, to be the outcome of this is that uh, there is any diminution of that. And it is important that high standards continue to be upheld. And I can assure you that as a minister, I will continue to expect high standards of the people that work for me because we're all working together for the British people. What kind of frustrations were you talking about when you said that you'd had some, some issues with the civil service? I think if uh, anyone who has worked uh, on uh, at the top of government, and I have had the great fortune of doing it for uh, many years, well, uh, and uh, I think in my, my own circumstances, at the height of the, the COVID crisis, of course I've wanted us to move uh, at pace to deal with that situation. It's, and I should say it's something that my senior civil servants that I work with also experience frustrations in terms of, getting things done. I think any of your viewers uh, who are in work, whether it's in the public sector or private sector, uh, would say to you uh, they have experienced frustrations at work. Kate, can you honestly say to me, hand on heart, you've never experienced frustration in your, your years at the top of political journalism? Oh, I'm sure we all have, but this is about what you have been saying this morning in relation to your relationship with the civil service. And there is a question now about whether the civil service is, for example, overstepping the mark in their roles. I mean, I mean that's the, the tension between the civil service and very senior ministers is now very much front and centre a focus for your prime minister. Uh, well, I wouldn't actually accept that uh, characterisation. In, in my experience, and I've, I've been fortunate enough to be a, a cabinet minister for a, a number of years and worked very closely with other ministers, particularly David Cameron when I was the Deputy Chief of Staff, over a period of, of five years across uh, the board. It is generally the case that we work together very uh, constructively. Of course, I, I might say that this is nothing new. If you think back to uh, uh, Gordon Brown's no great state secret to uh, Gordon Brown's behaviour uh, back in 2009. I think some of that would be looked at askance uh, today. Of course, from time to time there are uh, challenges, but overwhelmingly my experience has been one of positive engagement with the civil service and I pay tribute to them. Given that, what do you say to your colleagues, including Mr Raab, who are talking about active civ activist civil servants out to get them, uh, basically suggesting that uh, the civil service is opposed to uh, the present government's uh, ideological and political stance? Uh, I mean, do you just say to them, shut up, you're wrong? Well, Different people have different experiences of working with the civil well, service. Do you, do you believe there were activist civil experience. servants? What, what, I, what, I can, what, what, I can, what I can say from my own experience is I, I didn't find uh, that to be the case. I've, I've always found uh, it to be a constructive relationship working with them. What I, I should, though, add is that in respect of the, the Tolly investigation, I think in terms of the complaints procedure, there is a need, and we will look at, again at the complaints procedure, to make it a simpler fairer and clearer for everyone involved and I think that's the right thing to do. I mean the Institute for Government says there's been a missed opportunity to set up a proper scrutiny structure. Do you agree that a proper scrutiny structure for ministerial behaviour is needed? Uh, well I think the, 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 the work that, that you Adam have done over the years and many uh, journalists and parliament and everything else ensures that 
ministers are subject to a very high degree of scrutiny and I certainly feel subject to a very high degree of scrutiny. I don't think that we, we need to introduce further institutions in addition to that. I, I mean, the question is, it might just be a little bit unfair because at the, at the moment the arrangements are a bit ad hoc, it comes in the heat of the moment and maybe people do get the rough end of the stick, whereas if there was a more formalised procedure where people knew what the stakes were and how it was arbitrated, uh, it, would, it would actually be fairer and more protection for people like you. Uh, I actually think, Adam, you, you make a, a, a good um, and important point. And I think if, if you, and I'm sure you have done, if you read the, the Tolly report, some of these questions about the difference between formal and informal complaints and the time taken for those to come forward and the difference between the attitude taken in respect of that and uh, what would happen, for example, in normal HR relationships does need to be looked at. And that's uh, what we're committed to do, to look at these rules to see if we can make them simpler, fairer and more transparent in a way that I think would actually benefit not just ministers, but will also benefit civil servants as well. And we'll be taking that forward. And we told we're going to got yet another QC's inquiry coming out this week, another QC uh, with the first name of Adam, uh, about uh, Richard Sharp, the chairman of the BBC. Um, what's, what's your feeling about that? Uh, do, are you in any way reviewing your own decision to uh, support and endorse the appointment of Richard Sharp as chairman of the BBC? Uh, well, well, clearly I need to be careful not to preempt what is an independent inquiry. Uh, what I can say to you is that having overseen the process of the appointment of Richard Sharp as the Culture Secretary at the time, I have every confidence that uh, officials and myself conducted it in an appropriate way and I I'm, I'm hope and expect that that will be vindicated by the report. And finally, Oliver Darden, we know, obviously you will know as well, the London Marathon uh, kicks off today. There are a list of Conservative peers and MPs who are running it. We will be running a little bit of a, uh, a sweepstake, I suppose. No cash involved, though, this morning to see who's fastest. You've got Jeremy Hunt, Paul Scully, Alan Cairns, James Dudderidge, Lord Bethel, Lord Evans, all Conservatives running the London Marathon. Who is your money on? Who's going to be fastest? <laughs> well, I, I think maybe I'll, I'll put my money on... Uh, on, uh, I don't know, should we say Jeremy Hunt? Because the chances are I would expect to do it pretty quickly so you can get back to the day job. I have to say that I, I had a go at trying to, to run in my uh, brief sojourn in the back benches. Uh, I must have been wearing the wrong shoes or something because uh, I've got terrible knee problems ever, ever since. So uh, that, that's taught me a lesson not to try running again. I see that's